Hey everyone, I'm Bill. I'm with Calimoto TV. Welcome back to the channel and welcome to the in-depth review of the all-new 2021 Ducati Monster. That's right, we're here in beautiful Monterey, California with, well, the pre-release of the Ducati Monster. And we're gonna be heading out and doing a nice urban ride, some freeway rides. But before we do that, we're gonna do a real nice in-depth walk around of this thing, talk about all of the changes for the 2021 Monster and uh, well, all of the style differences. So let's go ahead and uh, look around this thing, get geared up, get out on the road and see how this thing does. All right, well, here we are in its full glory, the all new 2021 Ducati Monster. And uh, well, let's talk about the elephant in the room. That's right, the all new frame design and motor design. So obviously you guys know the 2021 has lost the trellis frame, but uh, I will say, you know, standing back from this thing and looking at it, I was really concerned that the styling went more um, kind of cheap. And I have to say now seeing the bike kind of in its full, it, it really doesn't appear that way. Now, obviously we have the all new engine here, the 937 cc uh, ducati l2 twin motor which produces 111 horsepower 69 pound feet of torque and uh, it's 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 nice i i'm i'm a little mad about the plastic i i kind of wished that it would have been opened up a little bit to kind of expose that heart just a little bit but obviously you've got the um clutch cover over here which really kind of you know gives you that little bit of ducati to it so let's go ahead and uh, move over to the front and talk about the new front brakes we have 320 millimeter front dual rotor uh, brakes with the new monoblock 432 front calipers uh, attached to steel braided lines which is very nice all the way up to a Brembo Master with fully adjustable in and out uh, levers. And one of the big changes for the bars is we do have a Brembo Master over here for your clutch. So no more cable clutch, the 821. We've ditched the cable clutch, which comes over here to our new slave and uh, I have to say that the clutch is actually pretty smooth. They've changed a lot of the clutch. It's now a 10 clutch plate uh, design. So a, a much better clutch design than the 821. Coming over back over to the engine, we have our full exhaust system, which is all Euro 5 now. And uh, Ducati offers a lot of accessories. We'll talk about the accessories in a second. One of them is the Tirmignoni uh, exhaust. They have a slip-on type, which bolts right into there. And then they have the full system, uh, which is also available. It comes at a Ducati price tag, but uh, it looks really, really good. Now, where we're on this side of the engine, let's go ahead and talk about these rear sets and the foot pegs. Now, this is gonna be quite a challenge for the aftermarket manufacturers because the front rider's passenger peg, or peg plus the passenger peg is all incorporated into one piece. So replacing this is gonna be quite a bit of a, a challenge for the aftermarket market. Now, uh, the right side is also attached to the exhaust. So uh, again, little bit of a challenge there. The swing arm, all new swing arm design, which is really nice, which obviously we're able to uh, see the underslung uh, disc for the rear. One of the things I've been on this bike just a little bit, and I feel like the lever is a little bit low at an angle, kind of like sits a little bit low, but outside that, um, I'm, I'm not using the rear brake too much, but that's the only thing I noticed about the rear brakes. Now, continuing around the rear, beautiful LED tail light, LED blinkers, front and rear. Uh, of course, our rear is gonna be able to, we're gonna be able to lose this very easy, just a couple bolts and then we can lose this. So I'm sure that there'll be an aftermarket tail soon enough, but we can kind of go ahead and turn this on and take a look at that nice sweeping tail light. Uh, 
Getting over to the rear suspension, we have a non-adjustable rear shock. Uh, it is adjustable height only, but no compression, no rebound, which is a little unfortunate, but um, I'm sure Aline's will have a nice little package for you back here, which will, uh, we'll, we'll talk about the suspension on the ride, but it's really actually not that bad. Now coming back over here, uh, we have standard the Ducati quick shifter up and down, and uh, it doesn't look like we can then make this into a GP shift. I'm not sure why you would want to, but um, we'll talk about the quick shifter here in a minute. Now, uh, I've heard some people talk about the water pump and how it's kind of in the way. I'm 6'2", and I really don't have a problem with the water pump where it's at, but it's quite a bit of a contraction, and it actually sticks out quite far. If you guys see down here, you can see it kind of sticks out just a little bit. Now, back around the front, we have LED blinkers. And for you US guys, yeah, we didn't get those cool sequential blinkers. Unfortunately, DOT doesn't allow them. So we get these blinkers, but word on the street is there is a accessory going to be sold with a non-sequential blinker. So uh, that may be an option in the future. I'm sure that there'll be some aftermarket companies uh, selling those. The headlight, absolutely gorgeous. Ducati, you nailed it on the headlight. I absolutely love it. All blacked out. And then of course, when we get onto the high beam and the headlight right there in the middle, uh, very, very, very nice. Now, if you guys have seen my earlier videos, we talked about me not having the plus. Now, <laughs> uh, I got a phone call from Alex at Ducati and he said, I got a plus, I really want you to take the plus. Not that it made too much of a difference, but there's your fly screen, there's your little windshield, and a larger windshield is available as an accessory, okay? Back here we have the rear cowl, that's also part of the plus. But outside of those two items, those are the only two things that makes this thing uh, differ from the other. I believe cost-wise is only about 400 US dollars for the um, plus model, so I think well worth it. Uh, Ducati's also outfitted these wheels with some really cool little monster stripes here. It's kind of their new thing. Some vinyl stickers. And uh, a lot of three, four, excuse me, three different paint options. We've got the red, we've got the aviator gray, and then I believe it is the matte black. I believe the matte black and the aviator gray color are an additional $160 option. Now coming into the cockpit, let's go ahead and get on this thing and take a look at the basic forward controls on the right hand, or excuse me, the left hand side. We've got our high beam flasher. We've got our uh, menu button, which takes us through the menus on the screen. We'll talk about the screen here in a second. Our high beam, uh, our mode and blinkers and horn. And then of course, hydraulic clutch. Thank you. And uh, over here on the right side, you can see we actually have equipped the Ducati accessory heated hand grips along with the starter button, the headlight, running light button, uh, and hazard lights, which is really nice to be able to have hazards uh, now. And these mirrors, we'll talk about the mirrors, but actually quite functional. Now, 4.2 inch display. Some people have complained about how small this display is, but I'll say I'm not a I'm not gonna complain. I think that they've done really well. Let's go ahead and get this thing zoomed in so you guys can see everything on the display. It's a little bit different than the V2. It's a little bit different uh, than we've seen in the past as far as you know, seeing the modes and the heated hand grip settings, the uh, DPL, Ducati, I don't know. Ducati something, but it is basically a, um, a launch control and our setting menus, we'll talk about the setting menus here in a minute. But we have everything that we need here. We have a changeable gas, uh, gas gauge or miles to empty. We have a clock over here on the right. Down below, all of your six axis IMU uh, traction control, Ducati quick shifter, the ABS and the wheelie control along with a temperature uh, number down there. So obviously it says low only because it's 
stone cold, the bike is cold. And then we have our air temperature over here and of course our miles. So uh, a lot of information here on this display. I have to say, I, I actually really like the display. Now, while we're here at the triples, we're gonna go ahead and point out another big fault I think that Ducati made is not having adjustable suspension. Will a Monster S be in the works? I think it needs to. A lot of people complain about the $12,000 price tag and it doesn't have adjustable suspension. But I think that if we can get this thing in an S for about another $1,000 and get Olean suspension on there, that's gonna be the way to go. So let's get geared up and out on the bike, talk about a few more features, talk about the performance, talk about the menus, and just uh, kind of wrap this thing up, get you guys through the city, get you guys a little bit of freeway riding, and uh, well, enjoy some of the sights here in Monterey, California. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and start off the ride in urban mode, and we're gonna talk about urban mode, and we're gonna talk about uh, the controls here uh, kind of at the start. Now, uh, the menu, you're gonna select your set, we're gonna be at the setting menu, but to change your modes, you're gonna push and hold the blinker button, which is the mode button, and then you have three selections between modes. You have sport, touring, and urban mode. And we're gonna go ahead and select urban mode by hitting the enter button and we've changed over into urban mode. Now, urban mode is kind of a reduced power, reduced throttle, more trash control, more ABS, more wheelie control. This is your beginner safe mode. So for you beginners, you guys, first time riders that are looking at the possibility of buying a new 2021 Ducati, this is going to be part of the video for you guys because this is what Ducati really wanted to make sure you guys knew was going to be available for you guys and Ducati wanted to make sure you guys knew this bike is going to be for you the new beginner rider. So as a beginner rider one of the big things is weight and controllability to a motorcycle. And one of the big things that obviously Ducati has done is they've shed 40 pounds off the weight of this motorcycle. By doing so, it gives you guys more control of being able to handle only a 417, excuse me, 416 pound motorcycle. And that is completely wet. So very nice to be able to have a nice light bike to control. Now in the urban mode, what they've done is they've trimmed back the, the response to the throttle. So it's not as twitchy as you would think, okay? It makes it very easy to basically, you know, it helps to be in first, but it makes it very easy to leave a stop sign, a stoplight. The throttle is just right there. That, that 111 horsepower doesn't exist in urban mode. That's right, because Ducati has trimmed it down to uh, only having about 75 horsepower. So it kind of tames it down for you beginners. And then you guys can grow into that sport mode and that touring mode. Again, also they've uh, upped all of the traction control and wheelie control and ABS to make it nice and safe for you guys. So um, that's also a big thing. Now, the seat height on this is 39 and some change inches high, which for somebody at about 5'6", is where you're gonna probably be max comfortable on this bike as it sits from the dealer without the low seat option. When you start to get into the low seat option, you're gonna lose another 0.8 of an inch. So almost another inch off of the seat height with the low seat height. Now for you tall guys like me, I'm 6'2", 230 pounds, I'm gonna benefit from the tall seat accessory. Uh, that's right, they actually have a small uh, low seat and a tall seat available for this Ducati. So we're running just the standard, the standard seat. And then uh, if you were going down to about 5'4", five, 5'2", five, you can add another inch drop on the lowering suspension accessory. Uh, it completely lowers the bike another inch. So very nice again that Ducati is really making sure that this bike is good for you beginners and you small beginners. 
Now, again, the traction control, the ABS, it's all up kind of high to make it nice and safe. In urban mode, we are completely able to change the response, not only to your throttle, in any of the modes, but in urban. If you want a little more throttle response, but you want the bikes uh, powered down, okay, no problem, we can do that. Or if you want the bikes power up, if you want all 111 horsepower, but you want a kind of a uh, lighter throttle, that's gonna be touring mode. It's gonna give you full power, but less throttle response. But then we can also change it and say, you know what, this thing, every time it like starts to get up a little bit, it, uh, it, 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 I want a little bit of a wheelie, right? We can change that with the six axis IMU that, uh, that Ducati offers on this thing. It's, it's been very, very much a joy to ride. Now, uh, we have the heated hand grips and I'll tell you, it's uh, 61 degrees for some of you guys, you guys will laugh. I'm gonna go ahead and open the visor. Some of you guys will laugh because 61 degrees for you guys is baking up hot, but I'm quite chilly. So let's go ahead and scroll the menu over to heated hand grips, hit the enter button, go up to low, hit the enter button again, and you'll see the heated hand grips go on, up again to medium, two squiggle lines, up to high, three squiggle lines. So I just want a little bit of heat, okay? And then go down to back, back, and then now we're back to our settings, okay? Now, the mirrors, let's talk about the mirrors because there's a love and hate and, and there was a concern that I have about the mirrors. And mirrors are very important for you beginner riders because, well, you gotta really be able to see all the way around you. And Ducati's done a good job for someone under, I would say, six foot because these mirrors are just a little bit too kind of pointed low. Now, I can see pretty good behind me, but it's a little bit cut off because I'm a little bit tall, okay? And Ducati's done, again, good job with behind, but these are adjustable in and out, but not up and down. So I can't actually adjust these up and down. I can pull them in, pull them out, but I can't adjust them in or out. So it's kind of a little bit of a disappointment for someone taller because I kind of got to gotta peek down to get in there, so. Now, changing the menu and changing the riding mode on the fly is actually very, very easy. What you're gonna do is you're gonna go ahead and just push the mode button, which is gonna take you into your settings. You're gonna push the arrow key up to touring. You're gonna go ahead and push enter. You're gonna close the throttle. And now we've got... hundred and eleven horsepower with some tame throttle response in touring mode you also have a little bit less ABS a little bit less traction control um, and a little bit uh, less wheelie control so you've kind of get a little bit more um, controllability in the touring mode okay now I'm, I'm gonna be honest with you I'm gonna be real honest with you if you guys are familiar with the channel you know how I roll and we're gonna roll that way through the rest of the ride. That's right, we're gonna go ahead and mode button in. And we're gonna hold, and we're gonna go up to sport, enter. That's right, <laughs> sport mode. So in sport mode, we have, uh, I have mine personally set up to low ABS. I believe it's on number two. I have wheelie control down to one. I have traction control down to two. I have throttle response to full, and I have power to full. And I have, uh, I feel like there's one more. There's something I'm missing, so sorry. Um, but a very, very controllable for you. Now, tomorrow we're gonna be on the track, and you know, I'm gonna turn those things down just a little bit more, all to the minimums. The minimum's just enough to make it so it's a little bit invasive to keep me safe, but not so invasive that I hate it, right? So now the Ducati sound is back finally. The Ducati A21, I feel like they lost that Ducati sound and we, we have back the Ducati sound. It's a very nice tone. It's a very nice Ducati sound. And I'll say when we're on it, uh, it's got a little crackles and pops and it bings and bangs and it sounds really good So welcome back 
to the sound of Ducati. Now, of course, we are in a wet clutch. I talked about the clutch a little bit earlier. We have the hydraulic clutch with the new 10 disc brake, uh, excuse me, clutch disc uh, kit. And they've gone from, I believe, five springs to three springs to make it a little bit easier to pull in that clutch. But the uh, hydraulic slave is allowing to give it a little bit more pressure that when you do have it released, it's engaging those 10 clutch plates even more. So very, very nice. I'm going to take a quick break and uh, give you guys a quick little tour through Monterey, California. If you guys have never been here, uh, this is what they call Cannery Row. And Cannery Row, for the people that know it for their bike nights, uh, when MotoGP used to come here, this used to be completely packed with thousands. I mean thousands of motorcycles. Motorcycles down the sides, motorcycles down the middle. I mean, this place used to be packed and unfortunately MotoGP left uh, Laguna Seca some years ago. And uh, World Superbike has been here and um, it, it died off quite a bit, but it was just, it's just quite a sight to come through here and just see the eclectic style of motorcycles. And it didn't matter. You've got Harleys, you've got, uh, you've got Groms uh, right here, all those little, uh, those little Honda Cubs or whatever they're calling them, the, the new little Honda bikes. There's all original ones over there. And it's just, uh, it's, it's a real kind of cool, um, uh, experience to have when you guys come down to this bike night. But as a general, you can see we're pretty well popping. I mean, I haven't been down here since the, since the vid and, um, man, it's just like, it's like it never happened. Honestly, uh, there's quite a few people down here, but the Monterey cannery, uh, th this used to be all where they would pull in all the fish and all of the, the, uh, the seafood stuff from the, uh, the bay, which is over here to the right. And then uh, they move them over in these, in these overheads and they take them over to the processing plants where they you know, can the sardines and stuff like that. But uh, all this stuff has all been converted now. This is the Intercontinental Hotel, uh, which is on both sides. Actually, it's up there as well as to the right. But one of the biggest attractions that you guys are probably familiar with and you guys know about on uh, about Monterey is the Monterey Bay Aquarium. And I love the Bay Aquarium. I haven't been here in some time. And straight ahead of us is the Monterey Bay Aquarium. Now, I believe they are still closed, but word is that uh, looks like we're gonna be moving up some tiers here in California, which means that uh, things are starting to open up and, and I'm quite happy about it. So uh, that's your quick little tour of downtown Monterey. And uh, we'll get back to the monster, but uh, thank you guys for sticking around. Just a little, you know, a little, a little change, a little change. So the suspension and the braking, let's talk about the, the, ergo, uh, the, the performance suspension and braking wise. Now, the suspension, again, I'm disappointed on it. I'm disappointed on it. That's all, that's all I'm going to say. That's all I'm going to complain about. But um, it's set up on the harder side, so it is actually not bad right now. Now, the bike only has 834 miles on it, so I'm sure at some point uh, this is going to soften up to the point where uh, for someone of my size, you're not going to be enjoyable or even someone of Bogna's size that is a pace of Bogna's. I think for you guys that are beginners, I don't think you guys are going to have much of a problem. But uh, I think for the bigger people, um, this suspension is, is definitely going to break in and uh, not be as enjoyable uh, here in not too many miles. So uh, just be aware of that. I'm assuming that there'll be suspension upgrades. Uh, generally, a good suspension upgrade can cost you uh, about $1,500 to $2,000 for really good suspension. So if you're considering this and you really enjoy this bike, but you wanna make that leap, trust me, there's gonna be aftermarket suspension available for this thing, and it's gonna make it that much better. The braking, oh, we just, we've, we're, we're in amazing braking. I think, and I know you guys might all call me crazy, but I almost think that this brake is better 
than the V2. Now it might simply be that way just because of maybe the weight and the transfer and just kind of how everything is, but um, I don't know. I, I feel like I've got a better response to the brake. The V2 brake on Bogna's bike tends to be a little bit squishy, right? This thing is like really kind of right there. So um, the brakes I enjoy. Now, I, I did mention in the in the walk around video that the brake lever is kind of on the low side and my foot's kind of like this. So you got to kind of reach just a little bit. Um, I think that's going to be a problem for the smaller foot people. So be be cautious of that. Now the ergonomics, oh, geez, I really, really am enjoying the ergonomics on this. And the reason why I'm enjoying it is because Ducati has stepped it up just a little bit by giving this just a little bit more of a sporty feel. They've moved the handlebars back just a teeny bit. They've narrowed them down. They've pulled them towards you, right? They've made them nice and comfortable. They've made the rear sets kind of back a little bit further. So you kind of are in that like sport feel, okay? The tank ergonomics and, and, and the width of the tank is, is, it's a very narrow tank. So it's very controllable for you against shorter people or vertically challenged people to be able to kind of step in and, and get down there. Uh, I don't have any uh, problem with the tank. Actually, uh, the, the design of the tank with these big cuts are up so high, they call it a bison back design tank. It's quite high, so you can see my, my, my knees. I'm, I'm way up here, I'm on my tiptoes, and it's not interfering. So you can see that as I get over, and tomorrow you'll see while I'm at Laguna Seca, by the way, um, you guys will see that uh, it's, it's not gonna interfere, but a beautiful design. Tank isn't that big, 3.7 gallon tank. So the tank is actually quite small, and the gas mileage is, okay it's not great you're not going to be you're not going to be spending 50 miles per gallon on this thing uh i will say yesterday when we rode this thing we got about uh, 120 miles and the, and the fuel was begging for a, a fill up so um and that was uh that was at some uh, spirited pace okay so uh the fuel tank is 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 an okay size now the motor, it's, uh, you know, we've, we've lost a lot of weight in the motor. We've got some pretty good redesigns on the motor, uh, the 937 cc's. So a very nice, very good um, size, a manageable size, but weight wise, it's very nice. It's, it's in a good uh, position, weight wise, balance wise. It doesn't feel, the bike doesn't feel too top heavy. It just feels, well-rounded which is important again for you beginner people but for people like me that are experienced that really want a bike that's agile and, and really kind of moves around this thing's got it man this thing is this thing is a, I, I call it the ripper man this is a little ripper it's got some great handling with these bars to be able to pop this thing around and, and really move this thing it's very nice it's very nice so I think all around the the controllability of this bike for a new beginner and for somebody of of experience like myself i have 20 plus years of riding i've got experience track riding if you guys are familiar with the channel you know if you're not familiar with the channel well here's my shameless plug make sure you hit the subscribe button and smash that like button and then of course ring that bell notification because the bell notification is going to give you notifications of future content because we have some future content coming out on the all new 2021 monster now we've unfortunately only been able to have this for just a couple days and I would have really loved to have been able to have this for a longer time um, me and Bogna have talked about the possibilities of buying one but we have another we we have another possibility of a uh, low CC naked bike uh, possibly coming to the collection so uh, again stay tuned because it's it's very nice now I'm gonna give you guys a nice little ride along the coast of the Pacific Ocean. And, uh, oh, look at the little point. Oh, beautiful dog. Oh. Um, sorry, sidetrack. Um, 
we're here at the Pacific Ocean. We're in uh, right off of Pebble Beach. And for you guys that know, again, Monterey, you guys know that the Monterey Bay Aquarium is uh, one of the big uh, features. But over to the left, we're about to approach Pebble Beach. That's right. The, the famed golf courses of Monterey is all through this section. And as we come up around this corner, you're going to see this mountain and grove of trees in front of us. And literally from here on the coast, all the way to that peninsula over there is all golf courses. That's right, there's a golf course here, which is actually, we call it the poor man's golf course. This is the uh, Pacific Grove public golf course. I've golfed here actually a few times. They have a nine hole and a 18 hole uh, golf course. Um, pretty reasonable, I think it's like 50 bucks, uh, 75 bucks with a cart rental. Um, so pretty reasonable to come and golf right next to the Pacific Ocean. And look at some of these houses absolutely gorgeous man i i you can give me any one of them i'll take it i'll take it sorry sidetracked again back from this um oh standard quick shifter i've forgotten about the quick shifter and i've i've forgotten about this because I, I, i've been having a hard time finding the time to talk about it and the reason is is because i don't like it i don't like it at all it's hard it's clunky you see it's it's just you gotta really get in there. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta move it. Um, and and I don't like it. I like a, a nice smooth, uh, a, a, a nice smooth, buttery quick shifter. Personally, now for somebody that's new to quick shifters, I don't think you guys are gonna have too much of an issue. But uh, I think that uh, for for me personally, um, I don't really like it. So, but uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn around here. And I'm going to start heading back to town and I'm going to pick this up and we can get into a little bit more of the high speed stuff. I really wanted to bring this thing to you guys on the urban mode because and, and, and where you guys are going to be riding it. And that's majority of the time is the city. Uh, I kind of thought about it and I'm going to make a U-turn right here. And the reason I'm going to make a U-turn right here is look at the bar. Look at look at the 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 degrees that this bar moves very 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 uh it's not a very much degrees <laughs> but it's uh it's got quite a bit of, uh, of, of turnability uh they've increased the uh steering turn uh the steering head uh locks to go i believe seven more degrees in each direction so uh very very nice to be able to make quick small u-turns um, but also if you're in kind of an area that you need maneuverability, um, you've kind of got it. So I think, uh, I think I'll rip through here, give you guys a little bit, maybe just um, kind of a view. Keep it quiet. You guys can listen to the bike for a minute or so. And then uh, as soon as we get past the view, I think we'll pick up on uh, a little freeway ride, pick the speed up just to kind of give you guys that, that look. And then um, again, stay tuned because we will have this at the track. And if you guys haven't already seen my first impression ride, I've already done that, which was a kind of a good spirited ride out at Lake Berryessa. So uh, enjoy the view, enjoy the sounds of the Ducati for a minute. And uh, let's pick you back up on the freeway here in a minute. Tony, I call it a little zipper for a reason because this thing's got some buzz, man. So uh, right, right there, just real quick, if you guys are still here, thanks for sticking around. But uh, 
I wanted to show you guys a little bit and talk a little bit about the torque and the power delivery. Uh, if you guys haven't seen my first impression ride, head over and see that because I talk a little bit more about it because obviously there it's more important. But for here, let's try to scooch past this guy. You guys will see this thing's got some good torque, some good pull. So on the lower RPMs, we're at 3,500 RPMs and you give it some gas and the beans, it's there. And some of the other uh, bikes in its class, the problem is, is it really takes a lot to rev up. The Euro 5 has really snuffed out that lower end, but Ducati's done a great job by getting that torque and horsepower to mesh together to be able to give you guys fourth gear roll-ons at 3,000 RPMs. Very nice, very nice. And that's kind of, that's ridiculous, right? I mean, we're not, you know, this is, that's, that's a ridiculous gear RPM to be in. You know, you, you really want to be up at a higher RPM. You know, we don't want to be at 2,000 RPMs in third gear. But even then, you can feel it's got a little pickup. So the delivery of the torque and the delivery of the horsepower and the meshing of that together is is all the way through all the way through the revs all the way up to 10,000 rpm so very nice very beautiful but uh i hope you guys enjoyed the urban ride uh give me a quick minute to get through the city we'll pick this back up i'm gonna get on the freeway and do a little bit of high speed riding with you guys just to kind of give you guys a perspective on the highway uh, because you guys will be in urban and city and highway so uh, let's pick it up over there and uh, we'll see you in a minute all right, well, welcome back to a little bit more open road. Um, I, again, I really wanted to go through the city and give you guys that perspective of what it kind of felt like riding this thing at that kind of that 25, 35 mile an hour. But I also want to give you guys a, a little bit extra and a little bit more of the, uh, you know, the 45, 50 mile an hour, uh, which is where we're going to be at right now. And then uh, we're going to get up to the freeway here in a second where we'll kick, kick it up a little bit more but um, when you get up to about these speeds, you start to feel a little bit of vibration. And, and Ducati's done such a good job. Now, Bogner was on this yesterday. And if you guys are a female and you guys are interested in a female's perspective review, uh, I encourage you to head over and uh, or subscribe because her review will actually be out right after this. And it's just her first perspective ride, okay? now. For her, she felt zero vibration pretty much anywhere. A little bit in the handlebars, and a little bit in the foot pegs. But she didn't feel the vibration that I feel until I mentioned it to her. And then she's like, ah, yeah, huh, that's a little bit crazy. And I said it in my first impression ride and actually someone commented and thought it was actually funny. I was like, Ducati's done a really good job moving the vibration from the handlebars and from the foot pegs to the back seat. And uh, me being a bigger person, my, my tush is backed up to this rear cowl. And this rear cowl, like I'm, I'm touching it right now. And it's like, it's like, it's like a vibrator. It's like pretty crazy. And uh, I'm not sure wh why, I guess, I guess it's just the, the back end of the bike is, I don't know. So um, that's where the vibration is going to be in the bike. So if you're a little bit larger person, uh, be prepared for that. Now, uh, again, we're on the plus model, which is going to be, uh, which is going to have the rear cowl on there. I'm not sure, maybe uh, by having the seat, it might dampen it just a little bit more, but uh, just be prepared for that. The seat is actually quite comfy. It's not too hard. It's kind of a, it's kind of a nice, cushy, soft uh, feel to the seat. So um, it's, it's gonna be good for you guys for a lengthy period of time. Now, Ducati has outfitted this thing to be accessorized to the gills. It has so many accessories to this bike. I mean, so many. We've got bug screens, we've got windscreens, we've got full exhaust, we've got slip-on exhaust, we've got heated hand grips, we have different mirrors, we have different uh, paint schemes, decal schemes. There's just so much different uh, availability for customizing this bike to how you want it. 
And uh, that's very cool that Ducati has kind of stepped up into that game. And uh, really relatively uh, reasonably priced. It's actually, most of the stuff is not that bad. Like the rear cowl, I think is like 200 bucks. I think the, um, I think the, uh, the bug spring, the, the, the bug screen is 180 bucks or something like that. So uh, not too bad, not too bad at all. So we're going to get a little sauce on this baby. And we're going to get up on the freeway and give you guys, uh, don't pay attention to that because that's in kilometers, by the way. <laughs> I'm just kidding. But uh, yeah, but don't pay attention to that because we're going to put a little sauce on this baby. So um, so the vibration's good. Uh, it's, it's, I don't think, I would say 75% of you aren't going to be affected by it. So let's go ahead and uh, throw a little hot sauce on this. Hear the sounds as we get a good acceleration and now again we're in sport mode. So it's got a nice little tone, a nice, nice little note to it. Now we'll tell you it's Sunday today. That's why we've got all these beautiful Sunday drivers out here. So I guess you can pay attention to the speedo. One of the features that we're missing out here for the freeway, which is a little disappointing that all throttle by wire motorcycles don't have, and that is cruise control. Uh, we, we do not have cruise control on this bike. It is not an option. It is not available. So don't look for it. Oop. But yeah, I mean, very stable. Uh, the front end feels very planted. It doesn't feel too loosey-goosey. It's just all in all, it, it really kind of feels planted at all speeds, high speeds, low speeds. And again, you just saw that it's got that little bit of, that little bit of pickup. Let's go to six gear. And you can see we've got a little bit of that pickup. And a wonderful intake sound, you know, um, with, with the Euro 5, uh, a lot of the big companies, uh, they've had to dampen the sound down from the exhaust, but uh, the Euro 5 really doesn't play too much of a factor on uh, intake noise. And uh, that all kind of started back in the 2015 era with Euro, I believe, 3, when they started to kind of tone, excuse me, that would be, yeah, that would be Euro 3, because in 2016, 17, uh, they picked up Euro 4 and they ran that for a few years and then now we're at Euro 5. Basically, everybody is at Euro 5 right now. So, kind of, kind of sucks. But, um, yeah, it's got a real cool, it's got a real cool sound. It's got a real cool note to it. And then again, you know, that Termignone uh, exhaust, I was able to hear that and it sounded really, really cool. Uh, I think this with the full system is just gonna be even cooler. So let's try to get this light to change. It's a little bit of heavy acceleration and a little bit of heavy braking. But we're back at our little, little bungalow. for the next two days. So thank you guys for sticking around. I hope I covered everything. Um, I usually don't go too detailed into motor, uh, motor specs because a lot of people in general don't really care about that. So um, I hope you guys don't care about that. <laughs> but if you do, um, I'll link you guys down to Ducati's website where you guys can just eat your heart out on all of the specs. But I think I've covered just about everything. Kickstand's in a good spot. It's nice back behind, so very nice. But let's take one final look at this thing. We'll leave the light on so you guys can see. Tail light again, LED blinkers. So we'll turn these hazard lights on. So very nice. And again, US spec. Oh, we kind of got we kind of got gypped here in the front, but uh, very cool. I mean, the thing just looks good next to this Pedigali V2. Ooh, baby, that's Bognos. That's my girlfriend's. Um, 
So guys, stick around because she has been on this and uh, we'll get her uh, first impression review. Again, this is kind of the in-depth review. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed it. I know it's a little lengthy, but there's so much to talk about with this brand new motorcycle. And I have to say, a lot of people have really said in the comment section that this bike is growing on him and this bike has grown on me it's a very very nice bike so uh, again thank you guys hit the subscribe button smash the like button and then ring that bell notification because bogner will be on it we'll be on it on track tomorrow um maybe we'll do a bonus track ride tomorrow if you guys aren't familiar with bonus rides head over to the channel watch some uh great stuff but uh we've got two other bikes in here if you guys uh well it's locked up right now but uh <sighs> Stay tuned for tomorrow, all right? But uh, thank you guys, and uh, we'll see you next video. Bye, guys.